Hey there, everybody, and welcome. Today, I will be playing Dune Imperium using the official solo variant. And because, as always, I'll be using a program that I wrote to play the game, you can be assured that you won't miss a thing that's happening, and also that my program is going to guarantee I don't make any mistakes or forget any rules during this playthrough. If you like what you see, please like this video and subscribe to my channel and check out the scores of other board game videos, tutorials, and playthroughs I've created over the years. If you don't know how to play the actual game Dune Imperium, so maybe take a look at my Dune Imperium multiplayer tutorial. I'll include a link to that in my show notes. For today's game, I will be playing the blue player, and because I'm playing solo, the official solo variant dictates that I will be playing against two AI opponents. In my case, they're going to be red and green. They will be drawing cards from a special solo deck that's going to tell them what to do. And um, needless to say, the rivals do not play with any cards, uh, normal cards. They just collect things. And score from those collections. I'm also going to be testing and playing with an unofficial sandworm variant that was designed by Terhe Broughton. Boy, I sincerely apologize if I just mispronounced your name. Terhe's variant adds some churn to the Imperium row, and I'll talk more about that when the time comes. Now, as I understand it, there is an official app provided by Dire Wolf Games that handles some of the basic needs of the game. I guess drawing cards for the AI opponents, uh, maybe playing some music in the background, that sort of thing. Uh, I have not explored the app. Uh, I don't hate apps in use when I'm playing my games, but in this case, I'm using my app when playing the game, so I didn't think it would be appropriate to start mixing apps. In any event, I'm going to be the blue player, as I said. I'm playing against red and green, and uh, I'm going to be playing at novice level. This is a, my first game playing solo, not my first game of Dune Imperium, but my first game playing solo, I've heard and read that it could be a pretty mean-spirited opponent. Uh, so I thought I'd start there, and maybe uh, if I do well or can manage, I'll uh, come back with a veteran uh, video at some point in the future. And this uh, checkbox here, just in case that I'm using the Sandworm Varium by Terhe, uh, one more time, Broughton. And... Uh, when the time comes, I'll describe exactly what that's all about. It's nothing It's nothing complicated. Just adds some interest to the game. Okay, with that in mind, let's get started. Okay, so everything has been dealt out. I, I didn't do any uh, draft pooling or anything like that. So what, everything's been dealt out randomly today. We all start with one water, as usual. So I should look show you up here. Everybody starts with one water. I'm the blue player. And because I'm playing at the novice level, I start the game with a Solari and a Spice to begin. The two AI opponents, called Rivals, are going to automatically earn their third agent in round five when playing novice. And I will get mine as soon as I can get to the Swordmaster. I start with my three troops already stationed in my garrison. The AI players do not. They have to get their troops out from their player board right from the get-go. Like I said, the rival opponents are pretty fierce. They kind of play their own game to a certain extent. So I'm not necessarily expecting to pull out a win, but I promise I'm going to be giving it my best. Let's see who my rivals are. The red rival is Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. Now, the rivals ignore their passive ability, so he won't be doing anything of this. But there will be occasion when he'll be, get, he'll be getting his signet ring ability. Uh, in fact, right off the bat, because there's the first solo card that was drawn from the I think it's called House Hagal Net Deck. When he does his Signet Ring ability, if he has a Solari, he will pay it to draw an Tree card. If we take a look at the green player, that's going to be Duke Leto Atreides. Again, he ignores passive ability, 
but if possible, when performing his signet ring ability, he will pay one spice to gain an influence with a faction where, where an opponent has more influence than he does. I am assigned Helena Rishes or Rishis from the House Rishis. I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce it. I have both of my abilities, so I can uh, block. I, I can go to spaces in Landsrod and in the city, even if they're blocked by enemies, enemy agents. And when I use my signet ring, I can remove a card from the Imperium row, set it aside, and buy it later during my reveal turn at a one persuasion discount. There are a lot of other little rules that I'll explain as they arise. Uh, hopefully I get them all right. Uh, I think I did. I've, I really scoured the uh, forum to make sure I've looked up all of the edge cases. I should point out that before we start, anytime a rival draws its third and tree card, it will discard those three cards and score a point. Anytime a rival gains its third water, it discards the water, scores a point. Anytime a rival gains its seventh solari, it will discard the seven solari, score a point, and you guessed it, any time it gains its seventh spice, it will discard the seven spice and score a point. So lots of places for it to be scoring points. It's still a race to 10, and to add insult to injury, uh, I guess the uh, I go last in turn order at the start of the game. The two rivals go first. So, uh, it's, it's me against red and green, and red is the starting player for this round. I guess I can show you what we're up for on the conflict card. It is an increase in influence in any one faction and one spice. Second place gets two spice. All right, so let's get going. Baron, the red player, can't wait to get started. He drew the top card from the uh, solo deck, the House of Agal deck, and he drew Arakeen. So he is going to be sending his rival to Arakeen. He does not do anything. He puts his agent there. He blocks the space effectively, although not for me because my special ability is that I can get to certain spaces even if he's there. He does not do anything for the most part that the location tells him to do. Instead, he does what his card tells him to do. You can ignore what's on the bottom. These swords, they only come into play during the combat phase, and I'll explain that when the time comes. So in the meantime, the Baron is going to Arakeen, going to be placing his agent there. He is going to be recruiting a troop, and because Arakeen is a combat space, he will be deploying that troop plus up to two additional troops if he has them in his garrison. He doesn't. So he's only going to be recruiting one troop and deploying it to the conflict. He also gets to use this signet ring ability. Pay a salary, which he doesn't have, so he's not going to be able to make use of that. And that's what's going to happen here. So he goes to Arakeen, he recruits and deploys a troop. And that's it. I should also point out that the two rivals do share the same deck of cards. It's actually a deck of 31 cards. It's scaled back to 27 cards when playing solo. You can already see that uh, two of the cards have been drawn and discarded. 25 remain in the deck. This won't get reshuffled until the deck is exhausted and it needs to be reshuffled. And now it's Green's turn, and he drew Wealth. Green the Duke is going to go to Wealth. Gain one influence with the Emperor, which is quite unlike him. Finally, it is my turn. All right, so it looks as though I have a nice assortment of cards. I can go just about anywhere. I think I'm going to try and participate grand strategy-wise in every conflict that comes up. At least try to get second place. It, it's going to be. It's going to depend upon what the rewards are. If they're for points, for sure, I'm going to. I'm going to try to give it my all. I think I'm going to start by harvesting some spice, either so I can sell it quickly and hopefully gain my swordmaster by round one or uh, two or three, 
or use it for some of the nicer faction locations that require some amount of spice up front. So for that, I'm going to play Dune the Desert Planet. I start the game with the water. I could go to Haga Basin and pay that water, but for now I think I'm happy with, uh, I start with one spice, so I'm, I'm happy going to Imperial Basin just to get a second spice. Probably not the greatest move if I were playing against human players, but I think I'm going to adjust my game here uh, knowing how uh, AI plays. Okay, so I'm going to go there and collect one more spice to make it two. And because I have troops in my uh, garrison, and this is a combat space, I can de de deploy up to the maximum, which is two. And for an increase in influence, sure, I'll do that. So now it's two against one, one being red. And now we're going to be moving to red's uh, second turn. It's going to recruit four troops, but it is not going to deploy them. So they should show up right there in its garrison. There they are. Green drew Hall of Oratory up here in Landsrod. She will recruit a troop, but not deploy it. You know, before I go any further, I should probably look at the Imperium Row. Uh, I didn't do that as I usually do as part of my games. So I see a couple of Bene Gesserit cards, a couple of Fremen cards. I'll be thinking about maybe improving my relationship up front either with the Fremen or the Bene Gesserit. Fremen is very popular because of the water and it allows you to get to this extra space, but uh, I kind of have this uh, feeling for the sisters of the Bene Gesserit. I will play Seek Allies, which is going to be trashed. And I think I'll go to Selective Breeding so I can trash a card. So that, there goes my two spice that I just, collect, that I just collected. I get one influence with the Bene Gesserit. Now I can trash a card if I want. And in which case I'll draw two more cards. I think I'll just trash this card and play over here, the one I just played, Doom the Desert Planet. So that is gone. Seek Allies is gone. And I was hoping for a little more persuasion, like some of those convincing arguments, but I didn't get them. So it looks as though I'm going to end up with three persuasion and two uh, combat strength added to the four that's already there, so I'll have six combat strength and three persuasion. Okay, so before I actually make my choice here with my three persuasion, uh, let me quickly explain how Terahay's Sandworm variant works. It's, act it's actually very simple and elegant and thematic to boot. You can see the Sandworm is sitting out here on the right side of the Imperium Row. Normally, when anybody takes a card from the Imperium Row, say I took Worm Riders, I would take it and it would immediately be replaced in the third position by another card from the deck. With this variant, it does what a lot of other games does, and that is it, it, uh, you take the card, say Worm Riders, everything to its left slides right to fill the gap, so other memory would slide right, Bene Gesserit Sister would slide right, and then the new card drawn would fill this leftmost space. All that happens normally. Then, when uh, the Maker's Phase comes around, the Sandworm eats whatever card is in the fifth position. All the cards slide down, a new card is drawn to fill the leftmost spot, and it just adds some churn to the, to, to the deck. So, And it also makes me think twice about bypassing any cards that are way out here that I know are going to get eaten come next Maker's Phase. For now, I'm not interested necessarily in saving the Spice Hunter, 
But I think I'll grab Benny Gesserit Initiate for my three persuasion. That'll end, end my reveal turn, and it'll get re nothing's going to slide in this case because it's the leftmost card. The new card will simply drop into the leftmost position. Okay, enough of that. Bene Gesserit Initiate. Oh, Bene Gesserit Sister came out. That's nice to know. Now, just before the combat phase commences, any of the rivals that have at least one troop in the combat get to draw a card from the House of Gaul deck. And for that purpose, they ignore everything on the top and they get a bonus of swords shown on the bottom. Now, this sort of simulates what swords they might have had in their hand during their reveal turn. It might simulate their use of, a, of, a, of an entry card that they don't play. Whatever the case may be, it's just uh, for ease of use, ease of play. So he's going to get, uh, the Baron's going to get a two combat strength increase. So it's going to end up being six to four. I'm going to take it. I will get the influence on the one spice. The Baron does get the reward. He will get the second place award of two spice. So his combat strength goes up to four. I'm going to get first place. So I get a choice of uh, faction influence. And it's an easy one. I'm going to go with the Bene Gesserit. That's going to get me to the second step and uh, my first point in the game. And the Baron gets two spice. Maker's phase works just the same way, except that, as I mentioned earlier, Spice Hunter is gone. Piter has moved to the right as of, as of all the other cards, and a new card has been revealed in the leftmost spot. Very simple. Keep that sandworm very busy over there. Okay, we're into round two. It's nice. The solo game goes pretty quickly. The conflict here says gain an intrigue card and three spice if you're in first. Gain two spice if you're in second. Green, the Duke, drew a harvest spice card. So there are no specific cards for Imperial Basin, Haga Basin, and the Great Flat. Instead, there's this harvest spice card, and you simply follow the instructions on the card, which is send an agent to the space with the most bonus spice. Or if there's a tie, the one with the most total spice. If no spaces have bonus spice, just draw another card. Well, we have two locations that have bonus spice. The one with the most total spice is the Great Flat. So that's simply where the Duke is going to place his agent. He will collect the four spice. That's the one exception to the rule that says that the AI players don't do what the location tells them to do, only do what the card tells them to do. But I guess the card ran out of space and didn't have room to say collect the spice. Okay, back to me. We're in round two. This is my first agent. Contrary to what I said, I made no progress in round one toward getting my sword master. But I really do have to do something about that. I think I'm going to play my uh, Dune the Desert Planet card. This is the second one. My second one, the first one got trashed earlier. And again, uh, well, I have a water. I guess this time I will go to Haga Basin and collect three spice for a total of four. And this is going to allow me to send up to two troops from my garrison. I only have one. I'll send the one troop. And that'll be that. The Baron is going to Hardy Warriors, where it will get its influence with the Fremen and recruit two troops and deploy them with up to two additional troops. So it is going to deploy four troops in battle. Two from the ones that are recruited, plus two that it already had in its garrison. The Duke, green, drew Harvest Spice. There is no location that has any bonus spice, so it's going to draw another card. 
It drew Carthage, or Carthag. It's therefore going to recruit a troop and deploy it. It has no other uh, troops in its garrison, so it will just deploy the one troop. But that will be its second. So how badly do I want this conflict versus getting my sword master? It's always something to interrupt. I think the sword master is going to win out. I, you know, if there was a point here, that might have changed uh, my feeling, but uh, there are other places I can get in tree cards. And if I come in second, that's great too. I'll get the two spice. But it's not looking so good right now. I think I am going to sell my melange. So to do that, I guess I have to play my Benny Gesserit initiative. And uh, I will get to draw an extra card for her benefit. And I don't know that I want to sell all my spice. Just enough to get the sword master. I, I like to keep some handy for the factions. So I will sell three spice for eight solari. I have one already, so it'll bring me up to nine. But it'll leave me with an extra spice. Okay, and then I think there's one more turn for the Baron, who plays Arakeen. Uh, it is available. It's a Signet Ring ability. He does not have any Solari, so he won't be doing that. He'll just be recruiting and deploying up to three troops. He has the two troops in his garrison, so three troops are coming in. And all of a sudden, my single troop there is not looking so good. So I ended up with two combat strength plus one from my dagger. And I do have five persuasion to play with. I'm just going to assume at this point that that troop is wasted. I'm not going to do anything with it. For my five persuasion, I like the look of Bene Gesserit's sister and other memory. But I don't want to see Piter DeVries go away. So I think I am going to grab Piter before he gets chomped up. That's all five of my persuasion. Uh, green rival, the Duke. For his combat strength, well, this is red. So this suggests to me that this is for, that this is wrong and that it's actually for the Baron, the Red Rival, who will get an additional four combat strength and bring his combat total up to 18. Yes, and now Green, the Duke, draws Arakeen. He gets one additional combat strength, bringing his four up to five. I trail dismally, and I'm not part of the conflict. So it looks as if the Baron is going to go come away with an Intrigue card. It's his first. Three more Spice brings him up to five. Remember, when he gets to seven, he scores a point. Second place of two Spice will go to the Duke. That gets him to six. He's even closer to scoring a point. Nothing for me to just to, except to sit back and watch. The pink boxes represent entry card counts, so, you, so I can see if anybody's close to getting their third entry card and therefore another point that way. Round three, now we got something good. We got a point and a water up for first, second place a point and a spice, and for once I get to go first. My first order of business, as you know, is to get my sword master with my nine Solari. So I'm going to be doing that by using my dagger. And get that out of the way. So I'm back down to one Solari. The Baron's up next. He draws selective breeding. He's just going to increase his uh, prospects with the Bene Gesserit. Hot on my tail, but nothing else. Green, the Duke, gets Conspire. He's going to go up here. He is going to 
improve his relations with the emperor and he'll recruit but not deploy two troops. Ah, but he got a point from getting to the second step of the influence track. I think I will, with red creeping up here, I want to uh, reinforce my position with the Bene Gesserit sisters. So I'm going to play Diplomacy and go to Secrets and also start stocking up on some entry cards. So I make it to the third step. I draw Master Tactician, a nice combat card for use in combat phase. You either add three troops to the combat or you retreat up to three of your troops. That'll end my turn and it'll turn it over to the Baron who is harvesting spice. There's only one location that has bonus spice and that's the Imperial Basin. So that's where he'll go. He has no troops in his garrison. He won't be deploying. But that was probably enough spice to bring him over the edge. It was. He increased his spice by two to seven. The seven scored him a point. So it's a tie game at one, one, one. And now it is uh, the green rival's turn. He's going to rally troops and he will recruit four troops to his garrison and do nothing else. If it's not already obvious, the AI players, the rivals, never pay the costs of, uh, of going to a space. They just simply choose a space, place their agent, pretty much ignore what the space does, and just follows the instructions on their card. Let's see, I went first, and I'm so I'm getting one extra turn due to my third agent. Boy, this is going to be the easiest battle I ever won. And the easiest point I'm ever going to get in this game. All I have to do is simply get one troop out. I will do something. Uh, you know what? I'll go, I'll go to Carthage and get another um, entry card. I, I, I'm a big lover of entry cards. And nicely in this game, since the AI never follow this, never does what the spaces tell them to do. Even if an AI player goes to secrets. I don't have to worry about having a lot th having more than three intrigue cards in my hand. So I am going to play Reconnaissance, go to Carthage, get an intrigue card, recruit, and deploy one troop. And I'm the only one in the battle, so it's a guaranteed win for me. And I also drew another combat card. Nice. Uh, for my reveal turn, uh, I'm not getting anything. In fact, one persuasion is not going to be enough to do possibly anything. Yeah, there are no cards available. So uh, it's going to be an easy reveal turn. <clears throat> Thank you. Combat phase, I get the point and the water. Oh, I have tree cards, but my program doesn't know that I don't want to play them. So I'll cancel. There's my point. There's my water. Maker's phase. Heading into round four. And another boring conflict card. Only pays Solari. I am not going to fight like tooth and nail here. Uh, I'll be happy even if I get second place. Put it that way. But I think I will build up my troops, if I can, for future battles that might uh, provide better spoils. It's the Baron's turn. Baron is going to go to Secrets. Gain influence with the Bene Gesserit will score a point because it reaches the second step. It will not let me alone. Next we have the Duke, who is going to Carthage and recruiting a troop. It's a combat space. He has got lots of troops in his garrison, so he'll be recruiting one and deploying three. I think I will harvest some spice using my signet ring. 
so that I can lasso Bene Gesserit's sister. I have one water. I could go to Haga Basin. But at the moment, I think I only have my eye on selective breeding so I can get the sister alliance and the intrigue card. And long-term goal is to harvest spice to try to get to the high council. That, but that's a long-term goal. I'm not sure when that's going to happen. For now, I'm going to be playing Signet Ring. I only want two spice. I don't want to give up my water. I'm going to go to the Imperial Basin. And which card do I want to set aside? Oh, Jessica of Arrakis is out there. Power Play is out there. All good cards. But uh, Bene Gesserit's sister is going to be my number one for now. So, I, so I'm going to be able to buy her for two later on if I've got the persuasion. Moving on to the Baron. He wants to go to Carthage. It's occupied. He's going to draw again. This time he wants to harvest spice. There's a tie, but this one produces four. This one produces three. He's going to go to the Great Flat. The Duke also wants to harvest spice. He only has one choice, Haga Basin, where there is bonus spice. He gets a point. Did he convert something? Yep. Paid off seven spice for a point. And deployed two troops from his garrison as well for the conflict. So he's got five troops standing by. I'll use Bene Gesserit Initiate to go to Sel Melange to get six Solari for that two spice. Drew Diplomacy. Very nice. Oh, I guess everything's done. This is my third agent turn. Do I want to be in this conflict at all? Yeah, I can use Diplomacy. To... He's hot on my trail here. Or I can start making inroads with the Fremen. By going here, at least I can get to second place and grab an extra four Solari. Let's do that. And maybe I'll get a water at the same time. Or should I? No, I, no, I have to go to Hardy Warriors to do that. Because I have nothing in my garrison. So let's play Diplomacy. Go to Hardy Warriors. Recruit two troops. Go up one space on the influence track. But I only need to recruit one troop to be part of the battle. Yes, I want Bene Gesserit's sister. I just want to demonstrate that I got two from convincing argument, two from the other convincing argument, and three persuasion and the combat strength from Piter. I do want to take uh, Bene Gesserit's sister for two persuasion. That's a one persuasion discount. That leaves me with five. And Jessica is still a card away from getting eaten. So I want to grab Power Play. I, Power Play is one of my favorite cards. And the voice came out. And now this is for combat strength. Oh, wow. Talk about overkill. Green is getting six extra combat strength. Going to bring it up to 16. There was no contest. So green is going to be getting six Solari. Uh, we'll not put it over at the edge for a point, but pretty close. And I'm going to be getting four Solari. There's no point. Six for green, four for me. Maker's phase. Heading into round five, and as I said... We all have three agents to play. There they are. And uh, up to go first is Green, the Duke. And for sale is the Mentat, an Intrigue card, and two Solari. 
and everything but the Mentat for second place. Looks like uh, the Duke is going to go to fold space and improve his relationship with the uh, Spacing Guild. Obviously, he doesn't take a fold space card. My turn. Uh, what was it? High Council that I wanted to get to, so I will play a Dagger and get on the High Council. And that means two extra Persuasion for every one of my Reveal turns. Now we're going to be heading to the Baron. He goes to full space as well. That's occupied. He draws again. Conspire. He's going to recruit two troops, get in with the Emperor, but not deploying. The Duke is going to Still Suits, where he will tie it up down, at the, down with the Fremen. And it was a combat space. He had the troops in his garrison. He deploys two troops. Well, I can't go to Hardy Warriors. I do want to be a part of this battle. I have two agents, I think. I'm going to hold on to her. I think I'm going to play Dagger and go to Rally Troops. And have troops standing by in my garrison for my third turn. Okay, back to the Baron. Hall of Oratory. No real effect. He's just going to recruit one troop. He's not interested in this battle. And uh, Green is going to be harvesting spice. There is no bonus spice out there, so he's going to draw again. Arakeen. This time, the Duke has Solari, so he is going to use his um, Signet Ring ability, but he only gets influence where he's behind, and he's ahead here, he's ahead here, he's behind here, he's tied here, he's going to get an influence with the Bene Gesserit. He'll also recruit and deploy one troop. He'll be up to three. Here's his uh, influence with the Bene Gesserit. And now he's got three troops in the conflict. And this is my last turn, so I have to make my stand here if I want. Uh, you know, the Mentat's pretty nice to have for a round for free. Uh, I have two combat cards standing by. I guess I'm definitely playing Reconnaissance. I'm debating here. I could go to Arakeen because I'm Helena and I can. I'm such a lover of intrigue cards, but I will. Um, I've got such little persuasion there. I think I will take the card. So I will recruit and. I have a choice here as to what to deploy. I don't want to go overkill, especially with these cards in my back pocket. I think two troops is sufficient. I think. Because I'll have two troops. I could use the combat strength from Bene Gesserit's sister. Let's go with two troops. I might regret it, but eh, I still get a entry card for second place. Red Rival going to Wealth. Is this uh, her? Yeah, this is her third turn. She will get a point from the second step of the Emperor track. Now my reveal turn. Ask me, wants me to reveal this one first and decide. I will... I will go with a persuasion. So that's going to leave me with two, four, six. Yes. Okay, that gives me some choices. Definitely Jessica. And for my other three. Oh, another power play. Oh. 
course, those get trashed when you play them. So the one I had before is no longer. I will draw Christ Knife. This is Green's uh, Combat Strength Bump, which is zero. So it's six to four. And I can simply get away playing Master Trans Tactician if I wanted the Mentat badly enough. I think uh, for Master Tactician, it's worth it. Gain three combat strength. Brings me to seven to six. I win the combat. I take these three prizes. And second place goes to green with these two prizes. Uh, that, that'll be green's first intrigue card. The Solari is going to put him over the top. He's going to score a point. No more Intrigue at this point. I got the Mentat. Got an Intrigue. He converted his Solari into a point. I'm behind, though. Three to three to two. I got to do something about that. I drew Plans within Plans. Got to broaden my influence with the factions if I can. This is round six already, and uh, increase of increase in influence with one faction and two intrigue cards will be going to first place. Where are all the victory point conflict cards? I want to know. I think I want to get my alliance with the Bene Gesserit before these guys come up any further. So we're going to use Bene Gesserit initiate. But actually, I think I would like to use Selective Breeding. So maybe I'll get some Easy Spice first. And then go there. Because I am going to get an Intrigue card when I get the Alliance anyway. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll go to Imperial Basin for the two... I don't need water anyway. That was my only option. And for troops, it's early yet. I like to wait and see what uh, what the other folks are up to. So I will actually not deploy any troops right now. It is uh, the Baron's turn. Baron is going to Highliner. Ugh. Okay, so he's going to improve his uh, influence with the Spacing Guild, where I'm not even active. And he's going to recruit and deploy three troops. Nope, he's going to recruit three troops and deploy five. So there you go. That's what my opponents are up to. I guess he takes this conflict very seriously. That's going to be tough to go after. Uh, Green going to Carthage. We're going to recruit and deploy one troop. Okay, so as planned, I am going to play Power Play. That's going to get me a bump of two on the track. I'm going to go to Selective Breeding, or actually, oh, I'm constantly changing my mind here. What if I do it with the Fremen? Get a point and get close to getting, if I want part of this battle, I need to make a move. No, nope. original plan, I think. Power play to selective breeding. That's going to increase by my influence by two. I'll get the intrigue card. I'll get the alliance, another point. I'll be up on the fifth step. And I'll have the option to trash a card for two, a two-card draw. Of course, I paid the two spice. I drew double cross. I got the alliance on the point. And do I want to trash? What would I trash here? I guess convincing argument is going to go. 
I drew Signet Ring and Dagger. Two more single persuasion cards. I really could have used something better. Maybe my deck isn't quite what it what I thought it was just yet. But it is round six already. It's going to be the Red Rival's turn now. The Baron going to harvest spice. He will harvest at the Great Flat. Deploy to troop. Uh, Duke is placing in conspire. Will recruit to, but not deploy. And will pull ahead in the race for the Emperor's Charms. Back to me. So I've got an agent and a mentat. How badly do I want this conflict? I'm up against six, though I have double cross. So double cross lets you pull a troop in from your supply and knock out a troop from one of your uh, opponents in the battle. So that means it would be ignoring extra combat strength. It would be instead of uh, 12 to something, it would be 10 to 2, plus whatever I put in now. Well, second place isn't terrible. And I do have Ambush. Boy, that influence would be nice, especially with plans within plans. I've got troops standing by. I think I will play Diplomacy. Could go to Hardy Warriors. But I like to have the water on hand. This will allow me to get two troops in. And then if I use double cross, I've got three troops against his five. And I still have ambush. To, so that, that's not bad. I think I'm gonna go with those odds. We'll go to still suits, gain a water. Get a point from the second step. And I still have the Mentat to play. Huh. So maybe I wait on double cross. And let's, let's give the other guys one more turn. They, I think they do have one more turn. Let's see what they do before I decide to go all in. If he goes even bigger here, it's nice to go last. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hold off. So I'm not going to uh, contrib contribute any troops here. And we'll go to the Baron's turn. He is going to Carthage, where he will... Uh, no, Carthage is occupied. Sorry, he's not going to Carthage. Try again. He drew Carthage a second time. He's not still not going to Carthage, no matter how hard he tries. He's going to Secrets. He's just going to increase influence, but not do anything about troop size. That's good for me. Green is rallying troops. Same thing goes. No more troops for her. But they're building up for next round. And now for my Mentat. How many troops do I think I need? I think two, which means three against five. Plus my ambush. Plus, yeah, double, double cross will make a three against five in my ambush. It's going to be tight. It's going to be close. Not sure. For my last play, I will use Signet Ring. What was out there? Didn't I say another power play was out there? Yes. Uh, I'm going to use Signet Ring to go to Haga Basin. And to set aside, it will be power play. To get that at four is really nice. Okay, gave me three spice in exchange for my one water. I'll deploy two troops. And now I think it's my reveal turn. Oh, I have an extra 
sword and extra sword brings my combat strength up to six. I will acquire power play for four. I will play double cross against the red player. He loses a troop, I gain a troop for my supply. So now it is uh, five against three. I've got eight combat strength. He's got 10 plus some amount. And I've got an ambush with four. So what the whole question is, what's that some amount going to be? I've got three persuasion to play with. Could grab the voice. It's about to go. Yeah, we'll grab the voice. Red is getting a boost of one sword. That is good for me. So it's 11 to 8 to 2. He got a harvest spice. He got two extra combat strength. That should bring him up to four. And now I will play ambush. Bring it up to five, up to 12, and I take first place, so I get influence with one faction, two intrigue cards. Red gets an intrigue card and a spice, neither of which is going to trigger anything for red. For my influence, and I think it's going to be the, I think this is an easy one, I think it's going to be the Fremen. One step away from an alliance there as well. And I didn't check to see what I got in the way of entry cards. So uh, there they are. Poison Snooper and Rapid Mobiliz Mobilization, which is not uh, a combat card, but it does provide troops at the last minute, I believe. Uh, let's get these guys resolved. So uh, the Baron's going to a Hall of Oratory, recruiting a troop. Green is going to fold space, uh, getting a point for the second space of the Spacing Guild. Got, really got to get onto the Spacing Guild track, too. My turn. Let's resolve Poison Snooper and see who's, see who's on the top of my deck. Uh, Jessica of Arrakis definitely drawing her in. And got her at the same time as Bene Gesserit's sister and Christknife. Oh, nice cards. These two play off each other quite nicely. I think I will start with Christ Knife. And uh, my water's down to zero again. I'll go back and get some more water, get my alliance with the Fremen, and get another water for, for that alliance. So we're going to use Christ Knife to go to Still Suits. Gain a water, go up a step, get a water, an alliance. That's two alliances I have now. And I will send two troops into the battle. Oh, this is for two steps on one track and an tree card. That's pretty darn nice. That would be great for folding space for me. Two troops. Okay, the Baron. Baron still suits is taken. Still taken. Harvest spice. There's no bonus spice to be had. You won't be harvesting any spice. You're going to selective breeding is available. You're creeping up on me. I don't like it. Green, the Duke, is going to Hardy Warriors. Going to get a step and a point. And now it's my turn. So the score is 5 to 4 to 5. It is close. I have no troops in my garrison. I have four Solari. I think I want to make the use make use of the of Jessica's uh, draw two, so I will play Benny Jesuit's sister, and I'll use her to rally troops. Yeah, 
ever mindful that I have to do something about this. I, I, because I could have used her, but I, I really like to have the troops in my back pocket, especially as we get closer to the end of the game, where those double points start surfacing for sure. Okay, uh, that's the end of my turn. We're turning it over to the Baron. Baron selective breeding, that's taken. Going to Arakeen, we'll recruit and deploy two troops. Recruit one, deploy two. Green wants to go to fold space, continuing the climb on the spacing guild. No, oh, fold space was taken by green, sorry. Drew again, harvest spice. Can't harvest spice, there's no bonus spice. Conspire is available. That's a recruit of two troops and an alliance with the uh, Emperor, finally. Doesn't get the two troops. Six to five to four. Green in, in, in the lead. This is the last turn. Uh, Jessica's going to draw me two cards. Hopefully I'll have some nice persuasion for a change. I do lose her combat strength. I could aim for highliners next round. Because next round is going to be... So round seven is one of the four level three conflicts. One of which is this and the other three are both double pointers so i definitely want to have troops standing by for the next couple rounds so i'm going to uh, take jessica to a place she's quite familiar with the great flat take in three spice to get me up to six which i'll then convert into troops next round assuming it's not taken and this will allow me to deploy two troops which will get me up to four and we've got a battle oh and i got rap rapid mobilization too i may play that uh this draws me two cards sure okay <laughs> once again bad persuasion but no matter, I'm up to six spice now. I'm moving in two troops. It's very exciting here. Going into my reveal turn. I didn't add up, so I got a combat strength there. Looks like I'm going to have about five, six, six persuasion, nine combat strength against my biggest competitor green at eight plus something i think i definitely have to do rapid mobilization so let's do that so that says deploy any number of your garrison troops to the conflict that'll allow me to deploy two more troops and now my combat strength is up to 13. nothing to scoff at and for my six, it's definitely going to be power play for one. And there's nothing else I can get for one. Red, for his combat strength, is getting three. It's going to bring him up to seven. What is green going to do? Green has eight. She draws five. She ties it. Nobody gets first place. Green and I tie for second. Oh, I could have really used that double. Oh, what? That's a bummer. Okay, we're tied for second. We each get an entry card. That won't trigger. That won't trigger. So nobody got any points that round. Brings us into round eight with uh, the Duke going first. So, you know, initially I thought it was going to be uh, the Baron who was going to be my main opponent, but it looks like the Duke is putting up a real fight here. Now we're up for two points and control of Carthage. Second place gets Intrigue and three Spice. 
This is where I have to shine. Hall of Oratory, good start for the Duke. Just recruits a troop. But he's got seven in his garrison. That's a little scary. Highliner it is with power play. So power play is going to get trashed, but it's going to get me a bump of two with the spacing guild. Get me a point. Tie it up. Oops, wrong card. Power play. Highliners. Two bumps up and sending five troops into battle. I'm not screwing around now. See how you like those potatoes. The red rival draws Arakeen. That's a recruit of one and a deployment of one. Nothing too worry, nothing too bad there. Green's the guy I have to worry about with all these troops in his garrison. He's going to Carthage. He will recruit one, deploy three. And he gets an intrigue, which will No, he doesn't get an intrigue, sorry. He's an AI player. I forgot who I was playing. This is this this does feel like you're playing against two humans over there even though you're not so my spice is at three wait i did pay six didn't i was my spice at nine oh i got three spice for my i forgot i got the three spice for second place in the last conflict that's why my spice is at three this makes it a little easier. Let's use, I got two water. Let's use the voice. We'll go spend one water at Haga Basin, get three, get three spice. And I will use the voice and I will block rally troops. Okay, so I've got spice back up to six in my turn. Red wants to harvest spice. It has to do so at Imperial Basin. Green wants to go to Selective Breeding, where it will increase influence, but nothing troop-wise. That's good for me. Oh, converted uh, something into, or was that its second step? Yeah, that was its second step on the Bene Gesserit track. That's what the point came from. Got to pay attention to lots of different things going on. Green has pulled ahead with seven to my six. Red trailing with four. I think I need to strengthen those troops. Huh. I have no faction cards. Um, and I have nothing in my garrison. That kind of limits me. My last Asian. Oh, I do have Dispatch and An Oh, I have Dispatch and An Envoy. That adds the icons to any card. So I'm going to play that. I could use Convincing Argument now, but I think I want the two Persuasion. I'll draw the card with Bene Gesserit Initiate. So I'll use her to go to Secrets. It'll get me an Intrigue, I think. And get me to the top of the track where I won't be bothered. I got demand respect. When I win a conflict, oh, I need to hold on to some spice, I guess, in case I do win this conflict. I'm looking pretty good. 
but I don't have any more intrigue combat cards, so anything can happen. Red is going to fold space, no effect. Except that he, the influence gets him a point. And now it's my reveal turn, and I wasn't even watching. Uh, what the, the convincing argument was two, dagger was a combat strength, so I'm at uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven for dagger. Piter brought it up to twelve, and then and then the persuasion plus the two, so I'm up to seven persuasion. This could come in handy. I'll take Sardaukar Legion. And I guess I'll take the other, the voice. Oh, there's another Bene Gesserit Initiate. Oh, I love shifting allegiances too. But with plans within plans. And I'm down at zero up here. Let's go for the voice for now. That's the one that's on the edge. Okay, for their extra combat strength. Oh, it's, yeah, for Red's extra combat strength. It's going to be, he said two now. He gets another two. That's four. Green's at six. He gets another two. That's eight. I have won this combat. My reward was two points in control of Carthage. Okay, and I could uh, resolve demand respect and pay two spice. This is this is might be the best time to. Where am I with the spacing guild? Gets me an alliance with the spacing guild. Gets me three solari, which I could, which can come in handy. Yes, I am going to spend the spice. And go up on the spacing guild. At some point, I may have to tend to the Fremen if I get some competition down here. Uh, oh, Green is not to be underestimated. He was very busy there. He drew his third and tree card, got him to eight. He drew his seventh spice, got him to nine. It is round nine. Nine against nine against five. Two points up in control of Arakeen. Second place, you choose two from among these two. Oh, man, oh, man. I've got four spice. I need to restock. So I'm going to do what I think I did the last time. I'm going to play the voice. I only really need... Oh, I need two spice, which means I have to go to Haga Basin. All right, paying the water at Haga Basin. I will use the voice to block Highliners this time. Back up to six spice. Turning it over to the, to the Baron. Wants wealth. He will creep up on green as far as the Emperor Alliance is concerned. Green is going to Highliner, which he cannot do. And uh, Arakeen. So he will, uh, he's got lots of troops standing by. He will uh, recruit one and deploy three. And get a signet ring ability. Did he have the spice? He did not. Power play. Highliner. Lock in alliance with the spacing guild. Sending in all five troops. Give Green something to think about. Not fooling around in round nine. 
Red, who uh, is sort of floundering a little bit. Rally's troops, at least, will have four in its garrison. And green, harvest spice, it will. It will go to the Great Flat. Uh, but it has zero spice now, so the four spice gets it close. But we're okay for the time being. Deploy two more troops. It is tied up. So what am I going to do now? If I play Sardaukar Legion, that gets me two troops. Or I could just go to Hardy Warriors and get troop two, two troops that way. I might as well secure my position with the Fremen. So I will use Christ Knife, Hardy Warriors. And I'll send in both of those troops. And uh, who went first? I went first, so each of my opponents gets a turn. What are they going to do? Frankly, what's green going to do? That's what I care about. Red is going to go to Conspire, which is available. It will recruit two troops, but not deploy. So again, it does not get involved in the battle. Green, Secrets, is available. It doesn't deploy. And I've got two Persuasion to spend. Oh, I'm resolving cards here. So that's not my total. That's just two from... High Council. Uh, I don't have troops in my garrison, so Sardaukar Legion doesn't help in that respect. So I end up with 14 combat strength. 2, 4, 6, 8. Oops, sorry. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. I didn't have any swords to show. I've got 4 Persuasion to spend. It's kind of late. May not ever see him, but I'll grab... Uh, Duncan Idaho, Duncan Idaho. Four combat strength, just tied it up. I cannot believe that. I thought I had this wrapped up. It just tied. The second time it tied. Ugh. Okay, well, it could have been worse. Could have been game over if he drew something like seven. So that means we each get two of these, and I choose for it. For my rewards, I will take an Intrigue card. I got Counselor's Dispensation, which lets me get two Spice, which could come in handy if there's a tiebreaker. And uh, I will take two Spice as my other reward. And now I choose for... The Duke. So I'll just give him what I gave myself. Uh, an Intrigue card. And two Spice. I think that's pretty fair. He's at four. So he's going to be really close to getting uh, another point. But we are going into round ten. Like it or not. I thought it was going to be over in round nine. It is nine to nine to five. Green is the guy I have to watch out for. This is for all the money. All I really have to do here is win the conflict. Who's up first? Red. Going to still suits. Gets a point. Green going to the Hall of Oratory. Okay, I've got great cards in hand again. I could use the voice to lock off Highliners. Uh, but there's no place to get four. I could, I could rally the troops. But if somebody goes to Highliners, I'm doomed. 
Well, maybe I shouldn't go that far. Uh, that's five troops against... Green has Tuner Garrison. Red I'm not too worried about. If, if Frankly, if Red wins the conflict, then I think I win by default because I have plans within plans, and I'm up on three factions. Okay, this could be a gamble. I'm going to play Dagger and go to rally troops. And pray that nobody gets Highliners. Here we go. Red. Conspire. So far, so good. Two troops for Red. But not deployed. Wow. He just got... He got up to seven? What happened there? He got the Alliance. Stole it from Green. Green dropped back down to eight. Thank you, Red. <laughs> okay. Uh, Green is going to harvest. She's going to harvest an Imperial Basin. Oh, but she got her point back from the Spice. Right? Yeah, 7 Spice. Increase score by 1. That you deploy 2 troops. Is it time just to go to Headliners? I can't. I only have 2 Spice. Damn it. Is there any other place I can get some Quick Spice? I don't think so. Oh, Counselor's Dispensation. Bah! Spice! I'm up to four. Just have a seat in the High Council, you get two Spice. Oh, boy, that came in handy. All right, so now I've got four Spice. I could do the voice. I have the water to go to Haga Basin. I could lock off Highliners and then go there with diplomacy. That's my plan. The voice. Haga Basin. Yes. Lock off Highliners. Convert one water into, brings me up to six spice. And going to Highliners, do I need to put in two troops now? I've got, yeah, because i got four in my garrison. Oh, two troops are going in. Okay. You're going to Arakeen. And you're getting your Signet Ring ability, but you have no Solari. He has no Solari. Won't get his Signet Ring ability. He will recruit one and deploy three. He's not going to make this easy. Green is simply rallying troops, but she can't. That's taken. She is going to Carthage. She will uh, recruit one, and she has nobody in her garrison, so only one more troop is coming out. And uh, is that everybody? How many agents does everybody have here? I got one. Bear, this is it. I think I got this locked up. Diplomacy. Highliners. Seven troops. I think, uh, so what's the worst? Seven more swords. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Well, let's see what, uh, let's reveal, do my reveal turn here. I have no persuasion to speak of. It doesn't matter. It's the last round. I've got 20. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Even if he got 7, he couldn't come close to my 20. I don't even need to acquire. The only time you would acquire in round 10 is if you had a chance of getting a card either on your first draw or your second draw that had an acquire benefit. That happened to be when I was playing in my multiplayer playthrough. Very exciting. Brought me a win, I think, as I recall. Anyway, uh, I'm going to cancel here. 
uh, he got two more combat strength, 20 to 12, and uh, green got one more combat strength, brought her up to four, uh, brought her up to seven, rather. So red takes second place for five spice, which will give red a point. But I dominated there, and I think I won with 12 or 11. 12, I think. Yep, there's the final score. 12 to 9 to 8. Pretty happy with myself. Got that extra point from Plans Within Plans. Having uh, three, being, being on the third step or higher with three different factions. I actually dominated here in, in virtually all three of these factions. Wow. Uh, and I really made an extra effort there to be very careful about what cards I put in my deck. I have to say, those power plays made a difference, but the real difference, I just wanted to have a lot of faction cards in my hand. I wanted to keep going back to the faction. Never wanted to have a turn, and I don't think I ever had a turn where I couldn't go to the faction just once, but I had this batch in alloy. Moral, if anything, of this game was... Uh, Getting to the factions as often as possible and uh, drawing as many intrigue cards as much as possible. Maybe I'll come back and try Veteran. Uh, this was pretty close, so I think I would, I would probably not do so well in Veteran. But maybe I will just for the kicks. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Watch the scores of other videos I've done over the years. Uh, if you like what I do, also consider donating even a buck a month to my Patreon campaign, which I'll mention in my show notes. Makes all the difference in the world. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye for now.